welcome to the repair shop, where cherished family heirlooms are brought back to life. Anything can happen. This is the workshop of dreams. Home to furniture restorer Jay Blades. Nowadays, things are not built to last, so we've become part of this throwaway culture. It's all about preserving and restoring. We bring the old back to new. Working alongside Jay will be some of the country's leading craftspeople. I like making things with my hands. I love to see how things work, and I want to know how things work. Whether it's a Rembrandt or somebody's family piece, every painting deserves the same. Each bringing their own unique set of skills. You're about to witness some magic. They will resurrect, revive... Oh, yes! ..and rejuvenate treasured possessions and irreplaceable pieces of family history. Oh, my goodness me! It looks um, like it's new! Bringing both the objects... <gasps> oh, wow! ..and the memories that they hold back to life. <laughs> In the repair shop today, Ceramics conservator Kirsten Ramsey carries out some serious surgery on a cherished Victorian gnome. Oh, yeah, look. It's unbelievable. So, that's why it's taken me so long to get that off. Whilst firefighting historian Stuart Black keeps a cool head whilst tackling the restoration of an antique helmet. You've done a smashing job on that. I don't even want to touch it, it's so clean. But first into the repair shop today, Rosie Gorman. Hello, how are you? Hi, doing? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Who has travelled from Lancashire on a super secret mission to test the metal of furniture restorer Jay Blades and musical box expert Stephen Kember. What have we got here? This is a smoker's music box. <laughs> a smoker's that music is box? It's a very old smoker's music box that has been in our family for as long as I can remember. That's cute. Um, Behind every little door is something that a gentleman would have used. So where would the cigarette? The cigarettes get. This looks like it's a little. Uh, yeah, but definitely. I would imagine that's where the cigarettes sit. There's um, a tobacco pouch here, and in the box as well. So these are all the, the carefully collected bits. This is the music bit. So this would sit on the bottom. Yeah. Um, okay. My mum's often told me the, the, the tune that it goes. However, it would just be amazing to have it um, working. It would be a surprise for my mum. She doesn't know I have it. Um, oh, she doesn't know? What, what, no. She doesn't know that you've got this? No, no. You've taken it out of the house? I've taken Smuggled. it out of the house. <laughs> Smuggled out of the Contraband. house. Contraband. <laughs> How long has this been in the family, then? This it was given to my mum from her father. Right. It was given to from his mother. Um, and then we think it goes further back um, through her father. Mm -hmm. However, it, it, it's been broken all my life. Yeah. Um, but my mum has seen it and had it working. The music, music right. would be produced while you lit your cigarette okay. and just relax just at relax. the end of the day. <laughs> now, I did actually notice there's a little hole in one of these decorative pieces here. Oh. And I suspect that that is probably for the on-off switch. Oh, wow. And what we've got there is something that looks suspiciously like an on-off switch. Wow. So, we're going to get the music playing. Get the music playing, doors working. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get back to you. Fantastic. Is that all right? Thank you ever so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Wonderful to meet you both. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care now. The music box is so special for my mum um, because it's one of the, the kind of only things she, she has really of her, her father, who so she had a really close relationship with. And um, because it's music, um, being able to hear, hear something hopefully will take her right back um, into her childhood. The, the ethics of restoration are that you shouldn't ma improve something, you shouldn't make it better than it originally was. Yeah. But yeah. I think it might be an idea to adapt it right. to, so that it's still going to be around in 50, 60 years' time. Okay. It's down to musical box maestro Steve hmm. to bring this intriguing piece of history back to its former glory. The plan for the music box is in two phases. We've basically got the wooden cigarette dispenser part and we've got the musical part. So I'm going to deal with the musical part first. 
So we've just taken off a uh, comb here, and so now I can relax a little bit. I've sort of diffused the bomb, as it were. Music is produced when the tuned metal comb is plucked by pins on the spinning cylinder. So next, Steve must use tiny droplets of oil to try to free up the locked mechanism. Oh, looks as though we're spinning, but it's still very dirty. So we can remove the cylinder now. Here we are. So the next time you see this, it should be nice and clean with all the congealed oil removed, ready to be reinstalled. But what we will have to do when we reinstall it is straighten some of these rather bent pins. OK, wish me luck. From worn-out woodwork in need of a revamp to dilapidated Daleks that have lost their voices. That doesn't sound right. The repair shop's talented team of craftsmen pledged to put the shine back on Britain's treasured possessions. Next in need of rescuing is Roy Farrier, who has a challenge for firefighter and memorabilia expert Stuart Black. What have we brought along then? Let's have a look at this. It's a farmer's helmet, my granddad's. Looks like it's been through the wars or through a few fires. He was born in. Uh, 1892, so it's best part of 100 years old, I'm guessing. And whereabouts was this? What town? Um, he was a farmer in Sandwich in Kent. Yeah. We've got a photograph of him uh, that was uh, it's dated as 1935. And we believe this is him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tommy Farrier. Uh huh. It's great to bring it in, Roy. And if you're happy to leave it with us, we'll get cracking and we'll see you when it's all done. Good to see Good you. Good to meet you. Yeah, bye bye. Nice Thanks you. very much. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now Stuart just needs to get this 100-year-old helmet ready for action. It's always lovely to work on, on, on something like this. Uh, it, it, it's back in the glory days of the British Fire Service. Um, if an item like this could, could tell a story, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Slight tweak at the end using the pliers. The nice dinging sound means that we're making perfect contact with the with the metal. If it starts a dull sound, stop hammering, we're in the wrong place. That's the sound we want. This historical helmet is sparking curiosity. The fire service, wouldn't it be proud? You'd be proud to be a fireman, basically. Well, that's right, there was a lot of uh, civic pride, uh, as, as well as, you know, personal pride in being it. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of gentlemen fire brigades as right. well. They were almost like social clubs, really. Oh, right. um, yeah, and they—they they were the ones that they had the really posh equipment. You wouldn't have just leather straps; they'd be lined with velvet. Oh come on! And the lining, instead of being leather, would be silk. So you'll have silk in here. Yeah. This one looks like he's done a bit of work. So he's been in the wars, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was an Indian rather than a chief. He's a worker. He's a grafter. Well, that's really. right. Yeah, yeah. And while Roy gets on with his grafting, Steve has taken up the challenge of restoring a musical smoker's paraphernalia case. These mechanical novelties were popular at the end of the 19th century. The cylinder music makers were put into keepsakes such as jewellery chests, photograph frames and smoker's boxes like this one. Having thoroughly cleaned all the individual pieces, Steve can now focus on bringing this antique musical gizmo back to life. Oh, well, I like this. Good. Well, we've got the sort of dissected Ooh. creature here. Is that the same one? Yeah, yeah. But uh, you've cleaned so that up well, don't you? We're doing all right because we've cleaned all the nasty um, congealed oil off of there. Yeah. We've got a little um, uh, pin straightening to do. Now, You're not really going to straighten one of them? I'm going to straighten several. There's quite a lot that are bent. Have you got bionic eyes? Yes. <laughs> these are my Joe 90 glasses. I remember Joe 90. And when I put these on, yeah. I turn into a superhuman pin straightener. It's a, quite a tedious sort of job, but it's, oh, wow, it's, it's what I do. The music box mechanism is well on the way to being fixed, so Steve can turn his attention to the turning doors of the cabinet. The way it functions at the moment is that when there's the knob at the top is turned, 
the doors will open like that. But the only problem is that two of the gear wheels are missing, so two of them don't open. And so we have to put this brass insert into one of the door pillars so that we can screw the gear wheel that is the replacement onto one of the uh, door pillars so that this one will open as well. Steve's got to be precise as he guides the powerful pillar drill. One wobble could ruin the precious antique. Get in. What I'll do now is I'll put the gear wheel in place. So that's going to go on there. We're going to screw in. Oops. So that's nice. Right, now, fingers crossed. There you go, look at that. <laughs> Now we've got to assemble the cylinder and the motor onto the bed plate so that uh, we can get the clockwork motor running and the uh, cylinder turning before attaching the comb, which is going to produce the music. A little bit of a test there. So wish me luck, boys, because if I wind this, it should start rotating. And it does. Look at that. Lovely. So we're off. With movement restored, it's time to bring out the bionic glasses and begin the all-important pin straightening. And the box is well on the way to getting its music back. Well, there you go. There's one for you. Between them, this talented team have a wealth of experience and all the skills to take precious possessions from lacklustre to luscious. Great. Smashing. Super. Hi, guys. Hey, Jen. Hi, right, thanks. The next customer has arrived and he's eager to see ceramics expert Kirsten. I brought this old chap in and I thought you might be interested in repairing him for me. Philip Bennett is a keen gardener living in northwest Wales. And behind closed doors, his home reveals an extraordinary obsession. The collection is around 205 at the moment. Um, I'm not allowed to have them all out. My wife isn't very keen on them. I actually detest them. I think they're horrible, scary little creatures. <laughs> not my favourite thing. <laughs> scary or not, Philip is desperate to get this particular gnome repaired. Well, this gnome is very special to me because he was my mum's favourite. And my mum always thought he was a very cheeky chap that reminded her of me. So this is homage to, to mum? And then... homage to mum. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Her yeah. favourite gnome. He's had many repairs and bashes over the years. He's lost a lot of definition in his arms. His head's come off and he's lost all his, his detailed colouring. So not much, then? <laughs> no? <laughs> he's in bad shape. Kirsten could actually, I think, fix this. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, you can see that there's glass fibre on them. That's quite unsightly, really, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. Um, it's been broken across the hat there. That could certainly be improved. Oh, and his hands. Yeah. If you look at the fingers, you can see there's quite a lot of detail there, whereas on that hand, someone's actually gone over that with, with restoration. So, Mum's known. It's definitely in safe hands. And um, we'll be in contact and let you know when we've worked on it. Great stuff. Thank okay. you very much. Indeed. Thank you, Phil. Thank, Thank you. you. So, what are you... Thinking of doing. I think we need to be quite careful how mm. we paint it. I don't want it to look brash. We need to be quite sympathetic with yeah. her, with the painting. Oh, it'd be wonderful to see him repaired again, um, looking like he used to. He used to look. It will do justice to the people that made him, and also great, great for my mum's memory, because uh, him being her, her favourite now. Kirsten will have her work cut out to get this Victorian cheeky chappy back to looking his best. I've applied some paint stripper and I'm hoping that it's going to, um, the solvent's actually going to start to dissolve the, uh, 
the previous repair. What's the silver for, though? It, so it, it just, keeps it warm? Yeah, it, no. No. <laughs> it, it contains the solvent, really, so that actually it works more effectively and also it just kind of minimises the fumes, really, a bit, so... OK. Yeah. So this is the test to say whether it's gone right or gone wrong? Absolutely. So I'm just really, no pressure? No, I'm really hoping that Should this Should I get everybody to come and have a look at this? <laughs> no, no, don't no. All right. <laughs> I'm hoping that it will have worked on the adhesive that's holding the fibreglass Fibre together. Glass. Yeah, okay. so... So let's have a look then and see what's under here. Ah, oh, look. OK, that's great. So that basically means that I can now apply more to the piece and actually start trying to strip away some of these layers. So it's going good? Yeah, I think so. All yeah. right, so I've nothing to worry about then. So <laughs> okay, I'll leave you alone. Thank you. Cheers. All right. Yeah, see you. Thank you. Musical box restorer Steve has been meticulously repairing a much-loved piece which has been in the owner's family for generations. How are we doing, Steve? Well, not too bad. Well, I've just got to attach this, the mechanism. So I've come at the wrong time, haven't I? You've come at the perfect time. Oh, You're right. You're about to witness some magic. Is it? So, would you like to, um... You're be gonna the trust first me? person? Yes, sit. All right, cool. Right, are you I, ready I for this? It. Yeah, you I won't might. Go on, give you a little push. Oh, stop it. Oh, well done. I think restoration went quite well. I think Rose will be happy. I know it's a family piece and there's a lot of sentiment attached to it, so I'm sure that um, she'll be pleased. I think I've done a good job. Here we are, ready for dispatch. Two hundred and seventy miles away, the musical box is safely back home in Lancashire. Rosie and her daughter are about to reveal the surprise to Mum Siobhan. Hi, Mum. Hi, Hi. Are you all right? I'm fine. What's uh... <laughs> Come and sit down. Hi. Oh, I just want to show you something that we've got for you. Um, and I'm sorry for sneaking it out the house. No. We know how special it is. How, how did you get it out the house? Um, we managed it. We've been on a bit of a secret mission for yeah. for a little while, and just want to show you that all the doors open again. Oh my word, Rosie! Um, you haven't got it working. We'll just have a, a little. Um, oh my! <laughs> We wanted to do oh. this for you because you're the greatest mum ever. Oh, thank you so much. Oh. When Rosie switched it on and, and the music came, it just evoked so many memories um, because it was such a lovely tune and so melodious um, that, I'd, well, I was speechless. <laughs> For me, this has been so worthwhile to be able to see my mum's reaction, to be able to make her so happy. She's been supportive of me throughout my whole life. She's a fantastic grandma, um, a fantastic mum, and just to be able to give something back to her that means so much. No amount of money would have been able to give her that reaction um, and make her that happy, so I'm absolutely delighted. Back in the repair shop, ceramics restorer Kirsten has been spending hours patiently peeling away many years' worth of old repairs on Philip's gnome in order to tackle the damage that lies beneath. Most of this area was covered with the fibreglass and I've managed to remove it, revealing quite a lot of lovely terracotta detail. It's just quite a long, slow process of mechanically picking away at it. As Kirsten carefully removes the layers of fiberglass repairs, the original damage is revealed. And this is just sort of coming loose now, really. Here. I think that's going to come off. Which it is. It's great. 
And what's really good is that actually underneath this restoration, I can see there's quite a lot of original arm left. That's good. I'm going to have to try and get this off and see what we're left with. But she's only just getting started. The left arm needs similar treatment. How are we getting on then? I've had a bit of a breakthrough, actually. This arm is just about to come off, actually. Oh, well, you're going to take the other one off? Yeah, it was really badly stuck, and um, it was sort of a really bad sort of crack there. So I couldn't actually just leave it, because it would have looked really awful. So... It would pull his arm off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, my... That's unbelievable. So that's why it's taken me so long to get that off. Because, so that's uh, a wooden dowel, yeah? Yeah, don't touch it. I won't touch it. <laughs> it's only because it might... I like touches. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, well, you've got to just get that out, and then it's a case of putting them back together again, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Kirsten won't be able to achieve a clean repair unless that dodgy dowel is removed. And for that, she needs a carpenter. Will, have you got a minute, please? Yeah, sure. Know me. Stumpy. Stumpy. I was just wondering if you had a small saw that might be able to cut that off for me. Yes. Yeah? OK. Right, just give me two seconds. All right, lovely. Mm -hmm. I have never amputated a name <laughs> sir, or anything else on a name. No, too close. Could you just come up Brother? a bit more? Yeah, that'd be there. great, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Lovely. Yep. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right, over to you. Lovely. Having cleaned and repaired the amputated arms, Kirsten can now reattach them properly. The arms are on, so I thought I'd try and deal with this crack that runs through the face and the hat here. So I'd like to just stabilise it with um, an adhesive. I'm going to fill the cracks and then sand back and then get painting, which is the bit I know Philip is keen to see. Kirsten is nearly on the home straight with Philip's gnome and Stuart is working up a sweat getting his fireman's helmet to shine. Keep polishing the main body, start moving it in so that it's dropping into all the recesses. Doing it this way, it brings out all the detail and it, and it, it makes the best of, of brass work. Now all that's left to do is carefully reassemble this beautiful piece of firefighting history. Unfortunately, by the time its owner, Roy, arrived to collect it, Stuart's been called out, leaving Jay to do the honours. Hello, Roy. Hello, Jay. How are you? I'm very good. Good come to see you. Likewise. You come to get your granddad's fireman's helmet, is that right? That's the one. Oh, right, hold on a minute. Okay. I'll just get it for you. I'll put my gloves on. <laughs> Oh, you've got special gloves. Well, Stuart was uh, was adamant. So it is a shame that Stuart isn't here, but he is an active fireman, so he's yeah. on call at the moment and he yeah. can't be here. But I did did want you to know that he, he took great pride and he enjoyed working on this one. I'll show you what he's done for you. Oh, look at that. I think you're going to have to do the honours to get it out, actually, because I can't touch it. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? He's obviously dressed the back, because this was badly creased. Yeah. And he's repaired, all, he's fixed all the straps as well. Yeah. That's brilliant. Let's them up. Let's have a look on the inside. Yeah, and he's managed to get the tape as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah? Yeah, that's You're absolute. Happy? I'm very happy. <laughs> it's super. It's done your proud. That's great. It's done your proud, then. Now I'll go back home safely now. That's great. Good to see you. Likewise, sir. Thank you very much All indeed. Right. You Thank grab you. that, I'll get a door for you. Thank you. All right. I'm overjoyed, really. It's, it's, it's super. Uh, I mean, it couldn't 
couldn't really have been better. This is the piece that was closest to my granddad. He would have said, I'll oh, give me the helmet, I'll repair it. But I think that even he would say, thank goodness it's gone to someone that knows what they were doing. My granddad would be very, very pleased with the result. Over in Ceramicsville, Kirsten is still hard at it on the restoration of that ravaged antique gnome. She's fixed the structure. The arms are on. Now comes the fun part. It's always really nice to, to do the painting, actually. It's when the sort of piece starts to come back to, to life, really. Part of the pleasure of, of the job is actually returning the objects to the the owners and um, I just hope that he'll be happy with it yeah and the owner's back and eager to be reunited with his favorite ceramic sidekick how we get on uh, hello look. is he <laughs> well, the shirt is bright isn't he well today I'm feeling rather nervous to see my old friend again having left him here that uh, was a very difficult thing to do and I'm very excited to see how he's turned out do you think so, Philip will be happy I think he's gonna be over the moon yeah, okay. he's gonna be really chuffed with this one How are you doing, Philip? Hiya. You all right? Yeah, fine. You? Come over. Has he been behaving himself? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Not at all. Doesn't let me down, then. <laughs> no. Right. Are you ready to see your friend? Well, I certainly am. There we are. Wow. He looks almost real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I found all sorts of different fillers, different adhesives. <laughs> he even had a wooden dowel in the arm. Ah. I tried to get it out and I couldn't. So in the end, I had to ask Will, our furniture restorer, um, if he could saw, saw it off for me. That's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's OK. It was a big job. <laughs> it was a big job. He's got his red hat. Yes, you indeed. That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. And um, I didn't go sort of overboard with... Um, with the face. He looks great. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. Oh, yeah, he will definitely be taking pride of place now. He's going in our living room. Is he? But my wife says he can stay there now, so. How is it? You've got the I've approval. I've got the royal approval, yeah. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. After many hours of painstaking restoration, Philip's little friend is more than ready to return to Gnome Sweet Gnome in Wales. Well, having the gnome back restored to a, as close as he was all them years ago is like having a piece of mum back that he's restored to his former glory. It's great, and it'll, when, I, when I see him now, it'll remind me of mum. And to go through all that effort to, to restore him was doing justice to the, the guy who made him in the first place, who put all that effort into uh, to creating such a wonderful piece. And he'll now, you know, spend his retirement in that condition. He'll never be going outside again. Join us next time as more cherished possessions go from neglected to perfected.